Okay. So today we are going to deal with the Faraday's law of electrolysis in which we have two laws. The first law of Faraday's of electrolysis and then we will go for second law of Faraday's. So I'm going to write the statement of this law, which is very easy. Basically, the setup in electrolyte, uh, electrolytic cell in the previous topic that we had studied in the previous class or you have seen that we had a container in which two electrode is there. And like this, this is your anode, which is positively uh, positive terminal of the battery. And this is your cathode, which is negative terminal of the battery. And you saw that some of the uh, product of electrolysis you have seen, uh, sometimes it is the metal or solid that goes to the cathode and stick there. And in some cases, there will be gas that is evolved at a particular electrode, either at uh, anode and cathode that depends upon the uh, nature of the gas or that depends upon the nature of the uh, oxidation or uh, reduction. Are you getting my point, Austin? Um, yes, sir. So basically, the mass of uh, solid deposited or the mass of gas evolved at a particular or a specific electrode is directly proportional to the charge passed through this circuit. That means basically if you have seen sodium deposited at cathode. So the mass of sodium deposited at cathode that depends the mass that deposited depends upon the charge that you are going to give through this circuit or the gas that evolved at a particular electrode. The mass of that gas will also depend on the charge that you will pass through this circuit. This is what first law of Faraday says. So basically mass deposited or mass of gas evolved is directly proportional to the charge passing through the circuit. To remove this proportionality sign, there is a constant that is known as Z. Z into Q. What is this constant? So I'm gonna tell you this Z is basically a chemical, a electrochemical equivalent. What we say that? This Z is constant and its name is, just wait a minute, its name is electrochemical equivalent. Electrochemical equivalent. And this Z also has a formula that is equivalent weight upon Faraday's constant. This E is equivalent weight that already uh, you know the formula of this from uh, solution chapter equivalent weight. And this F is Faraday's constant. Faraday's constant, which has a value 96,500 Coulomb. So we can also modify this formula. M is equal to, at the, uh, at the place of Z, we can write E by F into Q. E by F into Q. You also know that equivalent weight, basically, will be equal to molar mass mass or atomic mass divided by x that is valence factor or n factor if you remember from the solution chart valency factor valence factor or mm is molar mass mm is molar mass so basically i will give the statement before that i just explained what this first law of faraday says it says that mass deposited or mass evolved is directly proportional to the charge passing through the circuit or you give the charge pass, uh, pass through the circuit. So please do write it. I will again modify it. First you are going to write it.
let me know when you are done with this. Let me know when you are done with this. Sure. Very good. Humam, are you done with this? Uh, yes, I'm done. Okay, you, you also know a formula uh, from class 10. The rent I is equal to Q by T. So, this Q charge <coughs> will be equal to I into T. And initially, we had a formula of this. M is equal to Z into Q. So we can write M is equal to at the place of Q, we can write Z I T. Z I T. This is the new formula. Or accordingly, you can write M is equal to at the place of Z. You can just modify in your own way. Just wait a minute. So you can see M is equal to at the place of Z, we can write E by F into i into t and we can also write according to the requirement of the question at the place of e molecular weight or atomic weight divided by n factor or x valency factor into f into i into t so according to the requirement of the question we can have we can use different formulas of this. So the formula started from the same m is equal to z q. m is equal to z q. q is equal to i into t. You have seen a new formula for this. z is equal to e by f. e you already know equivalent weight, molecular weight, atomic weight upon valence factor. Is that clear, both of you? Yes. Very good. So just let me know when you are done with this.
Vermişler. Very good. Both of you done with this? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. So it's very easy. The formula you can see only you need to calculate. He, listen to me. Uh, as you have seen, what is this? E? e is equal to atomic weight or molecular weight divided by X. How you are going to calculate X? X will be basically here lost or gained electron. Lost or gained electron. Gained number of number of lost or gained electron. As you have seen, if you have mm, an electrolyte like, uh, let's say, CuSO4. So if you are going for this, you know that Cu plus two, it is converted into Cu plus two. So how many electron it lost two. So this X will be a two, or you can see like this, Cu plus two is deposited at Cu. What I want to say is that Cu plus two, will become Cu solid after gaining two electron, after gaining two electron. So this will have the reaction have X is equal to two. Are you getting my point? Both yes. of you? Okay, very good. <clears throat> now I'm gonna give you a question. Do you know? How does this value comes uh, or comes out to be one Faraday? We write ninety six thousand five hundred coulomb. Uh, is my voice lagging? No, sir. Okay. Ninety six thousand five hundred coulomb. Do you know how does this value come comes from where? See the yes. value ninety six thousand five hundred coulomb is very easy to understand. Do you know what is the charge on one electron? Charge on charge on one electron. Charge on one electron, you already know. This is your 1.6 into 10 raised to the power. 10 raised to the power minus 19 coulomb. This is the charge on one, <clears throat> one electron. Now, you also know that one mole is equal to 6.023 or 22 into 10 raised to the power 23 in number. Now, <clears throat> charge on one mole electron, charge on one mole electron. That means you can see it's a simple mathematics. One electron has this much charge. So this much electron will have, you are going to multiply it. It's just like if you are getting one chocolate from one rupees. So 1000 chocolate will, uh, you will buy in 1000 rupees. So if you are going to multiply this both, just wait a minute, 1.6 into 10 raised to the power minus 19. You will be able to solve it and you will get it 96,487 coulomb, approximately 96,487 coulomb. And for numerical, we use 96,500 coulomb. 96,500 coulomb. So please do write it. So from here, Charge on one mole electron is basically the value of one Faraday, which is 96,500 Coulomb. Approximately, please do.
Let me know when you are done with this. Done, sir. Very good. Uh -huh. Are you done with this, Mom? Yes, sir. Okay. okay. Austin? Yes, sir. Okay, I'm going to give you a question. First, I'm going to explain a question. How much charge is required? How much charge is required for following? reaction for following reaction the first i'm going to write is one mole al plus three converted into al aluminium solid so how much charge is required to convert al one mole al plus three into one mole al so for this you are going to focus on this part now, as you know that Al plus 3, just wait a minute. Are you able to see this stream? Yes. yes. Now, you, you know that Al plus 3 is converted into Al by gaining three electron yes or no if it will gain three electron it will neutralize itself and convert it into aluminium solid yes or no yes sir. now how much charge it will take you know that is it balanced is the reaction balanced yes or no is the reaction balanced what do you think Yes, sir. Is this reaction? Yes, the reaction is balanced because you can see one aluminium, one aluminium. What is the charge on the right hand side? Zero. And what is the charge on the left hand side? Zero. Why? Three electron. One electron has minus one. So three electron will have minus three and four plus three. That will combine to form zero. So this equation is balanced. And now we are going to use this estoichiometry method. One mole of al plus 3 react with 3 mole of electron or 3 mole electron can i write it to give 1 mole aluminium yes or no can yes. i write this we play with the stoichiometric coefficient i already discussed about the stoichiometric coefficient yes or no 1 mole of this react with three mole electron to give one mole of aluminium yes or no are you getting my point yes. yes now as you have seen in the previous question charge on one mole electron that is equal to one faraday are you getting my point this is charge on one mole electron so can i write can i write charge on one mole electron is equal to one faraday so charge on two mole electron will be equal to two faraday f you know that f is 96500 and accordingly we can write charge on three mole electron is equal to three faraday yes or no 
yes or no yes sir, yes so here it is clear that to get one mole aluminium deposit or to get one mole aluminium how much a charge we required three mole electron because in the question it has been given how much charge is required for following reaction so basically al plus 3 is converting into uh, converting itself into aluminium solid so how much electron it needed three electron that means three mole electron that means three faraday charge required to get this reaction done are you getting my point both of you yes yes so please do write it Uh, let me know when you are done with this. Sir, could you scroll down a little? Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Check it. We are done, sir. Both of you done? Yes, sir. Austin? Yes, sir. Okay, I'm going to give you. Uh, Another question, one mole Cu plus 2 to convert itself into Cu. Just let me know the charge uh, in the same way that I, I did for aluminium in which we got 3F, 3 Faradays. And this is another question, one mole MnO4 minus convert itself into Mn plus 2. Please do. Mm -hmm. Mn plus 2 it is. Very good, Austin. Uh, Mom, uh, please. Any answer for the third one? Uh, for the second one, Humamuddin. Uh, mm, very good. So I'm going to show you Cu plus 2. Convert itself into Cu solid only when it gains 2 electron. And 2 electron is 2 mole electron. That will give you 1 mole copper. 
and two mole electron that means two faraday austin what about this third one it's also very easy mno4 minus do you know what it is uh, mno4 minus convert itself into mn plus 2 so what you in the previous two questions the oxidation state of metal was given but in this mno4 minus it is not given directly so you need to calculate the oxidation state of this manganese so i want both of you to calculate the oxidation state of manganese first can you answer me what is the oxidation state of manganese let me know the oxidation state of manganese and if you are unable to solve this that also let me know very good humam it's plus 7 so you can see plus 7 is going into plus 2 how it will go it will gain 5 electron to convert itself that means 5 mole electron to get 1 mole mn plus 2 1 mole mn plus 2 in the same way 5 mole electron that means 5 faradays so the charge required to get 1 mole mn plus 2 will be 5 faradays is that clear both of you so these are some simple questions now we are moving towards the main question of this topic so i'm going to write the question please do write with me please do write with me the amount no oh. proper deposited in 5 ampere current is used for 1 hour to electrolyte Cu is so four. That means you are going to consider Cu plus two. Atomic weight no copper is given sixty three point five gram and one Faraday is given as ninety six thousand five hundred kilo.
Any answer, Austin and Humam? Any answer? Mom, are you able to solve this? Uh, no, sir. Okay, no problem. Austin? Yes. Okay, no problem. First of all, we can do this uh, by two methods. Okay. So the first method you can use is directly your formula. You know, the formula we derive. Basically, I forgot to write the statement about the first law of Faraday's. I will give you the statement. We can use the formula directly to calculate the mass. I'm going to show you. Whatever is given, first I'm going to write it. The amount of copper deposited, that means we need to calculate the mass deposition of the copper. When 5 ampere current, I is given as 5 ampere. 5 ampere, just wait a minute. This is your 5 ampere used for one hour. That means time is one hour. And we need to calculate mass. So I'm going to write M is equal to the first formula was Z into Q. Z into Q. Z is not given directly. So I'm going to break it up in two parts. You can see E by F. And Q. You already know that Q has a formula that is I into T because I and T is given. And as you as you can see, I, if I'm going to write it I into T here, I is 5 ampere and T is 1 hour. So we need to convert this into second because ampere is what? Coulomb per second. So we need to convert this time into second. Now you know that E is also directly not, not given. So what we need to do, atomic weight upon X into F into I into T. Now it's all right. As you know that atomic weight of copper is given directly, that is 63.5. Now X is valence factor. So copper here, copper is in plus two. When it will be deposited, you know that Cu plus 2 will gain 2 electron to convert itself into copper. Now you know that uh, the value of x uh, valency factor is 2. What is the value of F? 96,500. I is 5 and time is your 60 into 60. Now please do solve it. Then I will again give you another method not this formula but we can easily solve this isn't it easy we can use the formula or we can also modify the formula according to our need both of you getting my point yes please write it please write it and let me know and do solve this and let me know the answer final answer
Are you done with this? One minute. Okay, take your time, not a problem. Yes. Five point six. Any answer, Austin? Just let me match the answer. Yeah, five point eight, five point nine, approximately. Very good. Mass m is equal to five point nine gram, or five point eight six. If you are going to round it off, five point nine gram, it will be right, Umam. Yes, how we can do it by another method you know that copper is there so copper will be in plus two that is very important uh, copper is in plus two and it will be deposited in cu after gaining two electron yes or no please do respond so we can easily write two mole electron will give you one mole copper Two mole electron that means two Faraday and you know one mole will be equal to its atomic mass and atomic mass is given that means 63.5 gram copper. See, so basically if you are going to pass two Faraday's charge through the circuit, you will get 63.5 gram of copper deposited on the specific electron. Yes or no? Yes. Sir. Now you know that 2 Faraday, that means 2 into 96,500 Coulomb, that will be equal to 63.5 gram copper. If I'm going to see, if I'm going to apply only one Coulomb charge, what will be the mass of copper deposited? It will be 63.5 upon 2 into 96,500. Yes or no? Just wait a minute. Yes. So basically, this is a unitary method that I'm applying to get the answer. So I can write this 2 into 96,500. Now, what was the total charge that we had given? So Q is equal to I into T. I is given as 5 ampere. So 5 and T is 1 hour. That means 16 to 60. That means 3600. So total charge that you have passed to that is 5 into 3600. I am going to directly write 3600 Coulomb. So what will be the mass deposited of copper? That will be 63.5 upon 2 into 96,500 into for 1 Coulomb this much gram of copper. So for this much Coulomb. This will be your 3600 gram copper. After solving it, you will again this equation and this equation. If you are going to see, they are both same. So the answer will be again 5.9 gram, which is very easy, right? Please do write it.
Let me know when you are done with this. Are you done with this, both of you? Sir, in the last yes, part, sir. Sir, in the last yes, part uh, five to three thousand six hundred should be that to both sides. Wait a minute. Five into thirty six hundred. Are you? Yeah, you know that if you are getting. Pulam charge. You are getting this much gram of copper. So this much coulomb charge, you are going to multiply it. Yes, yes or no? Yeah. Okay. Please do let me know when you are done with this. Answer. Mom? Yes, sir. Okay. I'm going to write this statement. Please do write it. Uh, <clears throat> first law. Electrolysis. Faraday's first law of electrolysis, so you can say. So, Faraday's first law of electrolysis. Now, what does this say? Write with me the mass of a substance deposited. or the mass of gas liberated or evolved you can write liberated or evolved at a particular electrode at a particular Electrode is directly proportional to directly proportional to the amount of charge amount of charge passing through. the solution that means basically passing through electrolyte i already explained this statement so first of all you are going to write it and let me know when you are done with this
are you done with this are you done with this both of you yes sir done this is the question based upon first law of uh, first law of faraday's or electrolysis please do Oh, uh, so mom, you have given the answer. Yeah, that's correct. Austin, any answer for this question number 19? Uh, I'm not sure, sir, but one. One. One is what? Uh, D, option D? Yes. Sir. Yeah, it is. But you should be sure. There should be confidence. The number of Faraday's F required to produce 20 gram calcium from molten CaCl2. First of all, CaCl2, if we are talking about uh, produce calcium, so Ca is in plus 2 and it converts itself into Ca. Yes or no? After gaining 2 electron. Are you getting my point? Yes. So basically, 2 Faraday will give 1 mole and 1 mole basically means 40 gram calcium 40 gram calcium now i'm going to write in a positive like this 40 gram calcium will be deposited after passing two faraday charge so we need to calculate for 20 gram so first we are going to calculate for 1 gram 1 gram will be basically 2f upon 40 2f upon 40 coulomb charge and we needed to calculate for 20 grams. So 20 gram calcium will be for 2 Faraday's upon 40 into 20. So you can see this 2, 2, 2 will be cancelled and 1 Faraday will be your answer. Isn't it easy? Let's see. <clears throat> now moving to the next question. I'm going to give you, which is also very easy. You just need to be careful and understand the language. And you will get 
the right answer. Are you able to see a new question? Uh, yes, sir. Okay. Please do the previous solution. Let me know when you are done with this. So the answer that you have given Austin is C and Humam, you also have given answer C. Very good. Now I'm going to give you another question. It's also based upon formula. And I think you can do this easily. Please do this.
No, are you done with this? Any answer? Yeah, no, okay, no problem. I'm going to explain this. This is also very easy based upon formula. How many grams of cobalt? That means you need to calculate the mass or weight. It will be deposited. When a solution of cobalt to chloride, you know, whenever you are going to see salt of D block element, basically the D block element has variable oxidation state. So generally, they determine their oxidation state in Roman numeral. Are you getting my point? Cobalt exists in plus two, cobalt exists in plus three. And if it has been written cobalt chloride, how we come to know of whether uh, the cobalt exists here is in plus two or plus three. Are you getting my point, both of you? Yes. yes. So that's why it is given. Yeah, it makes uh, the question easy. Now you can see is electrolyzed with a current of 10 amperes for 109 minutes. Oh man, it's very easy. You can see M is equal to Z into Q. We haven't given directly Q or Z. So I'm going to change E upon on F and Q is I into T. Now you know that I is given 10 ampere. T, this 109 minutes, can, uh, you can convert this into second. Now come to E. E is what? Molecular weight or atomic weight upon valency factor into Faraday's, the value, you know, about the value of Faraday's, 96,500 Coulomb. This way to me. 96,500 Coulomb. Now, what is the atomic weight of co cobalt that is given 59? And from here, you can see in Roman numeral, it has been given cobalt is in plus 2. So, what will be the value of valence factor 2? And you know the value of Faraday is constant. That is 96,500. Now I think you can solve this easily, right? What is the value of I? I is 10 ampere. What is the value of T? T is 109 minutes, but you need to convert this into second. So for second, you are going to can multiply it by 60. This much gram. Please do let me know the answer.
let me know when you are done with this. Very good, Humam. Have you got the answer, Austin? Yeah. Now moving to the second law of Faraday's of electrolysis. Second law. Of Faraday's. What does it say? So I'm going to write a point about this. Then I'll explain. So first you write with me. When same amount of. When same amount of. Charge is passed. Through. Charge. Different light, different electrolyte solution connected in series. Then weight of substances deposited or liberated deposited or liberated at electrode are in the ratio of their respective equivalent weights. First you are going to write it and then I'll explain. Please do write it and then let me know. Let me know when you are done with this.
Are you done with this, both of you? Yes, sir. We have done, sir. Austin, Umam, Umam. So see what. Yes, what does it mean? Basically, same amount of charge is passed through different electrolyte. If you are going to uh, pass same amount of charge, then the weight deposited in both the system will be directly proportional. There, basically, the weight of substance deposited or liberated at electrode are in the ratio of their respective equivalent weight. That means we can write this in first system w1 directly proportional to e1 and w2 directly proportional to e2 so in this second system so we can directly write a relation between this two e1 e2 so their equivalent weight ratio is same as weight deposited ratio and this is very important please do write it Let me know when you are done with this. Done, sir. Okay. I'm going to give you a question on this. Or not on this. A charge of one Faraday deposits, a charge of one Faraday deposits one mole of substance B, one gram of substance. See, one gram equivalent of substance D, one AMU of substance, one AMU of substance. Which one of the following is correct? Please do it. It's wrong, Humamuddin. Please think about it. Austin, any answer? Yes, it is. So I'm going to explain this. This is very easy. You can see one charge of one, uh, a charge of one Faraday deposits. How much uh, mole of substance or you can see, you know that M is equal to Z into Q, right? Now, Z into this Q is given as one Faraday. One Faraday. And Z is equal to what? But Z is equal to E upon 1 Faraday, 1 Faraday. So you can see 1 Faraday and this 1 Faraday 
will be cancelled. So mass deposited will be equal to equivalent weight. So it is one gram equivalent of substance. We can say. Is that clear, Humamuddin? Austin? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Mm, just wait a minute. Um, 